Welcome back, Sebastian here. So, a bit of a break since my last video, but today, uh, since it's pretty much been confirmed that by Red Bull, that uh, Daniel Ricciardo will be returning for the uh, US Grand Prix this coming weekend. So, I thought I would take the chance to talk about uh, Liam Lawson's short stint in Formula One in 2023, and how it compares to other rookie super subs who have come in uh, as mid-season replacements in F1. So, I'm only look going back to 2007, uh, for this, of course, there have been many uh, in the past before that, but I uh, just wanted to have it be uh, not be uh, too exhaustive. So the first one I want to talk about, 2007 Sebastian Vettel. So he had come in uh, earlier in the season for one race uh, with BMW, replacing Robert Kubica after his uh, massive crash at the Canadian Grand Prix. Came in, scored a point, uh, did a really good job, uh, so much so that Red Bull decided to replace uh, Scott Speed at Toro Rosso with Vettel uh, for the remainder of the season. So in the remaining races against uh, Antonio Liuzzi uh, in qualifying uh, three to four, uh, lost to Liuzzi. In the races where they both finished, it was one to two. However, Vettel did get the better of Liuzzi in points, uh, five to three under the old point system, which under today's system would have been 12 to 10 uh, in favor of Vettel. Uh, next, uh, two years later, we actually had two rookies come in mid-season. Uh, first, we had, uh, well, first chronologically, we actually had Jaime Halgeshwari again at Toro Rosso, replacing uh, Sebastian Bourdais, and his teammate there was Sebastian Buemi. Uh, so, of course, we had the two, Seb two Sebastians for half a season there, of course, and uh, Sebastian Vettel versus Sebastian Bourdais the season before. So, uh, in qualifying, 1-7 uh, to seven, uh, in favor of Buemi, so Al-Gashwari did lose the qualifying battle pretty decisively in races where they both finished 1-1, uh, one, one. so only two races finished out of those uh, eight races total. Uh, point zero to 3 in favor of Buemi, in today's system, 0-10 to 10 in favor of Buemi. So Al-Gashwari uh, didn't do quite as well against Buemi as Vettel did against Lutzi. Uh, also in 2009, uh, Grosjean, Roman Grosjean came in uh, as a mid-season replacement, replacing Nelson Piquet after uh, kind of crash the coal crash gate scandal from 2008 came to light. Uh, of course, his teammate was Fernando Alonso, an extremely difficult teammate to come up against. In qualifying, whitewash there 0 to 7 against Alonso, and in the races where both drivers finished 0 to 4. Uh, points 0 to 13, and under today's system, that would have been 0 and 32. So not particularly good by uh, Grosjean, and he was not retained for the 2010 season. He went back, did GPT, GP2, and came back as a full-time driver for Lotus in 2012. Next, uh, 2011, Daniel Ricciardo came in mid-season at HRT, replacing uh, Narayan Karthikayan. Uh, his teammate was, again, uh, Antonio Liuzzi. Uh, in qualifying, it was 5-5, so it, uh, tough tied in qualifying, and in the races where both drivers finished, it was 3-1 to one in favor of Ricardo. So Ricardo actually got the better of Liuzzi, uh, which is an in interesting contrast with Vettel, uh, but at the same time, you know, different driver, different uh, cars, and at this point, Liuzzi was basically at the tail end of his F1 career. And of course, because it was an HRT, the points were nil-nil. Then we get to 2011, and we have Alexander Rossi against uh, Will Stevens. So this was kind of a strange one, um, driving for basically Marusha Manor at this point. Uh, the car was absolutely awful, and because I'm assuming uh, at the time there's a lot of uh, race-by-race -race sponsorship agreements, uh, Roberto Mary had basically driven the first half of the season, and I guess on a race-by-race -race contract, Rossi was brought in because he was replaced a couple times during his stint, which probably didn't help his confidence on track. But he did out qualify Stevens uh, three to two as their time of as their time at, during their time as teammates together. So uh, good job there uh, in the races three to one in favor of Rossi as well. So Rossi did look honestly uh, pretty good against Stevens, although again Stevens not a particularly good driver. And again zero zero. Uh, and that, the reason I've underlined Rossi in red is that other than Lawson, every other driver got a full time race seat at some point after their super sub appearance. So a bit unlucky for Rossi there, never really to get a full-time shot in F1, but so be it. Then we get uh, next year, uh, 2016, Ocon against Fairline. So at the start of the year, Manor had brought in Rio Harianto, I believe. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it, uh, to com uh, teammate uh, Pascal Fairline. However, uh, he ran out of money midway through the season, so they replaced him with Esteban Ocon, uh, Mercedes Jr., 
who had also been, uh, I believe, uh, been driving in DTM uh, the year before. Uh, doesn't do so well against Veriline, but then again, Veriline was a very good driver. Uh, two to seven in qualifying, but in the races, three to three. So it looks pretty good for Ocon in the races. And of course, zero, zero points from 2016, 2016 Manor, a pretty poor car. Then we get to 27, and we actually, actually had a double rookie replacement here. So Pierre Gasly against Brendan Hartley. Uh, Gasly had a couple races against Sainz. Hartley had a race against uh, Kvyat as well, replacing Gasly. Uh, during, or no, yeah, replaced, Kvyat replaced Hartley, uh, Kvyat replaced Gasly while Gasly was doing Super Formula, uh, doing Super Formula commitments. So only, I think, three races total that uh, Gasly and Hartley actually did together. Uh, qualifying one-to-one, -one, uh, because I believe Gasly didn't set a time in one of those, and in the races, uh, where both drivers finished, zero-to-one in favor of Hartley. Point zero zero as well. Of course, the interesting thing with this is that uh, basically both drivers were retained for 2018 and Gasly definitely got the better of Hartley that second year. Um, that second year in F1 and of course he's still driving in F1 for Alpine whereas Hartley was uh, replaced at the end of 2018. Then we get to 2023 almost uh, six years in between which is pretty long time compared to the uh, frequency of rookie super subs we had up here and of course it was Lawson against Sonoda. Uh, qualifying one to four in favor of uh, of uh, Sonoda, and for races though Lawson actually won the head to head two to one in favor of in uh, in his favor. Of course, there was uh, some you know context there that's important. Uh, one of the races uh, Sonoda DNF'd on the first lap. Uh, another race uh, Sonoda the Dutch Grand Prix Sonoda was given a time penalty. We had a late safety car and that, of course, meant that he finished behind Lawson. So there is some important context there. Uh, points 2-0 in favor of Lawson, uh, getting both of those points at the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix. So as of the recording of this video, uh, Lawson doesn't have an F1 seat for next year. You know, I'm not going to say much more than that. Uh, it's, you know, pro pretty good chance that he gets in an F1 at some point. Of course, the cards have to follow his way. I think, you know, overall he did a pretty good job, maybe slightly exceeded expectation by scoring those points. Uh, had some very, very difficult races, very difficult sessions. Qatar, one of the hottest races, one of the most difficult races according to the drivers ever. Dutch Grand Prix, very, very difficult condition. Singapore, always a very tricky one. So three of his five races, very difficult races. Uh, only minimal spins and crashes. The spin in FP3 at the Dutch Grand Prix. And of course the spin at the first lap of the sprint in Qatar. So. Overall, you know, I think Lawson did a pretty good job. Uh, I think that Red Bull will be looking for a way to try to bring him into uh, Alpha Tower, whatever they're called, next year at some point in the future. But for now, that's really all that, you know, we have, all the data that we have on Lawson. I think, you know, pretty good job, and we'll see where it goes. I think the other interesting thing to note, one, two, uh, three, four of the drivers out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, half of them, Alpha Tower here, Toro Rosso. So not including Ricardo, who is also a Red Bull Junior. So interesting to see that uh, Red Bull Alpha Tower are much, much more likely uh, to replace drivers mid-season, bring in a rookie mid-season than pretty much any other team. So that's all for this video. Uh, I think I will be doing, maybe doing one more video this week before the preview. And then of course, preview for the US Grand Prix on Thursday. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye.